Right now is not a good time to buy Tesla stock. Stick around if you wanna know why. For this analysis, I'm using the discounted future free cash flow model. I'm using analyst predictions for future revenue and free cash flow growth. And I'm laying out what kind of growth Tesla actually needs to justify today's current share price. I love using this model because it's very intuitive and it's very easy to understand. Basically, the free cash flow is the amount of money that a company is able to reinvest for future growth, pay off debt to reduce interest payments, or pay shareholders dividends or do share buybacks. Essentially, this is my return on investment. I don't care as much about the earnings per share as I do the free cash flow per share. And this is because the earnings will deduct out depreciation and amortization. These are non-cash expenses. So the free cash flow better represents the amount of cash that a company actually has to return value to shareholders. So I'm trying to find out how much free cash flow is a company generating in the past and how much are they expected to generate in the future and how much are they going to grow that free cash flow. So the first thing I want to look at is Tesla's annual letter to shareholders where they break down what are their different segments? How are they generating revenue? And what is their plan for growth in the future? We design, develop, manufacture, sell, and lease high-performance fully electric vehicles and energy generation and storage systems and offer services related to our products. So it sounds like they have two major segments, automotive and energy storage and generation. Not only do they have products, for those two segments, but they also offer services. First, looking at their products in the automotive segment, they have their Model 3, Model Y, S, X. Recently, they came out with their Cybertruck, and of course, they have their Tesla Semi. The Semi is the one that I am most excited for going forward. I think it has the most potential for growth. They've already kind of cornered the market and done really well with their Model 3 and Model Y, and I think competition is gonna start to eat into those revenues, perhaps, but the semi, a lot of opportunity for growth. And then in the energy segment, they've got their Powerwall and Megapack energy storage. But products isn't the only thing that they have going on. They also have really exciting technologies. In the automotive segment, they have a proprietary powertrain and lithium ion battery, and they have an improved manufacturing process all proprietary, so that gives them a leg up over their competition. They have self-driving AI, which is the most exciting part about the automotive branch, where they use vision-based tech. They have access to tons of field data, autonomous Tesla ride hailing, and robotics. So these are the kind of things that they're looking to expand into in the future. I think that is very exciting, being able to have your Tesla go do ride share without you having to drive it is awesome it's a really cool opportunity just looking at their products i'm seeing lots of potential with tesla so far and the energy generation and storage technology they have modular battery systems software and a solar roof that integrates with their power wall other opportunities that they have for revenue is the public charging they've now made their supercharging stations available to other car manufacturers other products so they're able to get lots of revenue there they're offering insurance and of course they get their automotive regulatory credits. This is where other car companies are required to purchase these regulatory credits from Tesla if they are not producing green energy products, green products like Tesla is. So this is a great form of revenue for Tesla. All of those concepts sound really good in theory, but let's see how are they actually returning revenue? How are they returning value to shareholders in practice? So if we look at their revenue breakdown, Automotive sales has increased by 17% from 2022 to 2023. I would like to see a breakdown to see how is the semi segment increasing. The only thing they really call out here specifically is that most of the increase is primarily due to combined sale of the Model 3 and the Model Y and cash deliveries from production ramping for Model Y globally. So. Model 3 and Y, these are the lion's share of their automotive sales. However, they have had a margin decrease due to lower average selling price. This was slightly offset by a decrease in cost per unit, but I think this is where we're starting to see the competition start to take away from Tesla's advantage where they had really cornered the market. Now they're starting to have to sell their products for less and less, which is eating into their margin. The next big revenue breakdown is services and other where they uh, have used vehicles, vehicle services, body shop and parts, paid supercharging, 
vehicle insurance revenue, and retail merchandise. This segment has increased by 37% from 2022 to 2023. That's another big increase. Really cool to see. However, they have had a margin decrease in this segment as well. And that's really due to the exact same issues we talked about before is uh, lower sale prices. And then finally, their energy generation and storage. We see a 54% revenue increase from 2022 to 2023. That's really exciting. So Tesla has been growing quite a bit in some of these other areas. Now their total growth in revenue is only 19%. So you know, 78.5 billion of their revenue, which is the vast majority of their revenue is coming from their automotive sales. But some of these other segments are growing really nicely. They are seeing quite a bit of revenue growth. However, there are some risks going forward. First of all, competition. We're already seeing it with electric vehicles. Tesla's margins are getting eaten away because they're having to sell their vehicles for a lower and lower price. Electric vehicles are getting more and more popular, both in the United States and internationally. So competition is eating away at Tesla's US markets, Chinese market, and the European markets. So this is a big deal. The regulatory credits are also at risk when we're talking about competition. If more and more car manufacturers are coming out with EVs, then they're gonna be less reliant on Tesla for the regulatory credits, thus eating into another revenue stream for Tesla. And finally, with AI, Tesla is not gonna be the only company that is really going hard on self-driving vehicles. NVIDIA has recently declared on their annual report that they're going to start going after the autonomous vehicle segment. So lots of competition for Tesla. I can see this really starting to eat into their revenue streams and make it more and more difficult to keep a high margin. Finally, the next big risk factor that I see is Elon Musk himself. He's not fully focused on Tesla. We saw with the recent CEO pay debacle where Elon Musk is getting paid $55 billion from Tesla. And one of his big reasons for wanting this big paycheck is to go after landing a human on Mars. So he's pulling money out of Tesla. He's pulling his attention out of Tesla and he's focusing on other things. This is a big risk factor. Even in Tesla's annual report to shareholders, they have a section for risk and it reads, we are highly dependent on the services of Elon Musk techno king of Tesla and our chief executive officers. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. So now that we've kind of built a narrative for ourselves, looking at the annual report, the next thing I want to do is see what kind of growth is required for Tesla to justify their current share price. And for this, I like to look at my discounted future free cash flow model. I won't go over every detail of the spreadsheet here. I've already made a full length video doing just that. I'll put a link right here in the corner if you wanna check that out. Also, if you wanna just download my spreadsheet and use it for free, I'll have a link in the description below. I come up with five different estimations for the intrinsic value of Tesla with my discounted free cash flow spreadsheet. I come up with three from analyst predictions, and these are analysts from stockanalysis.com. I've got the low, the average, and the high, and then I've got one prediction using the past revenue growth, and I extrapolate that into the next five years. And then finally, I have my own prediction where I'll put in my own annualized revenue growth to kind of play with the numbers and see what share price is going to result from different types of growth. I've got a few different areas that are in yellow where I have to input information. The sections in yellow are the assumptions that I have to make for this spreadsheet. So first I type in the ticker and that will automatically scrape the web and fill out all of the financial inf information for Tesla, all the analyst predictions. A lot of that stuff will be done automatically, but I have to enter in the free cash flow margin plus and the free cash flow margin growth. So my spreadsheet will automatically take the average free cash flow margin over the last five years and it'll couple that with the analyst projections for future revenue growth. So I'll take the revenue prediction, multiply that by the free cash flow margin, and then that way I can get a free cash flow analyst projection. And then the annualized revenue growth, that's my own personal prediction. The perpetual growth rate, this is the rate at which I'm projecting Tesla is gonna grow into infinity after the five-year prediction. So you may be familiar with the growth curve of a company. It kind of looks like an S curve. At the beginning, growth is very slow, and then you have that initial growth phase where you're accelerating. 
and then you're scaling on top of that. And then finally, when you become a mature company, you're kind of leveling off. Well, in that mature company phase where you're just slowly growing into infinity, that is the perpetual growth rate. And then finally, I have my discount rate. This is something that you can just Google online. I use the cost of equity on alphaspread.com. You can see that they put Tesla's cost of equity at 9.36%. This is the return that I wanna have every year. This accounts for the risk of investing in Tesla. So a riskier company will have a higher discount rate. And finally, I have to put in the minority stake, which is zero for Tesla, and then the shares outstanding in millions. On my discounted free cash flow dashboard, I've got four graphs. The first two are showing the revenue projections. The first graph shows the high analyst prediction in red, the average in yellow, and the low in green. With Tesla, there is a huge spread. With the high analyst prediction, we're looking at nearly a 6 X increase in revenue over the next five years. If we go by companies ranked by market cap, Tesla is already the 11th biggest company in the world. Are they really gonna be able to 6X their revenue over the next five years? Remember, we're looking at the S curve, the typical growth curve of a company. Is Tesla really gonna keep scaling to that extent over the next five years? I find that doubtful. So in the next graph, I've got the past performance extrapolated forward in red and then my prediction in yellow. So we can see how the discounted future free cash flow model prices Tesla at all of these different growth trajectories. So the analyst high prediction, this is only a $142 intrinsic value for Tesla. Tesla's current share price at the day I'm making this video is $240. So even at this insane growth trajectory, Tesla is still overpriced using the discounted future free cash flow model. Now, one thing we can tweak is we can increase their free cash flow margin. So right now, I've got Tesla's free cash flow margin going into the future at their average over the past five years, which is 6.18%. So I can have that margin grow by one percentage point per year. And with a 1%, Free cash flow margin growth. Now the analyst high prediction puts the share price at $248 per share. So this is the growth scenario that Tesla needs in order to make today's share price worth it. They need an annualized growth of 43% every year for the next five years, and then they need to grow into infinity at 3% per year, and they need to become increasingly more profitable with an increasing free cash flow margin. In my mind, this is just not a likely scenario. If they're able to grow at a more reasonable pace of 15% per year, then that would put their share price at $91 per share. And even if they were able to continue their past growth, which has been explosive at 31.5% year over year, then that just puts their fair share price at $167 per share. So with all of this in mind, Tesla has a lot of exciting things on the horizon, lots of really cool opportunities for revenue growth. The semi is really cool. The solar roof, it's really cool. And then of course their self-driving AI has a lot of potential. However, all of that has to just go perfectly. Tesla has to have insane revenue growth, insane free cash flow growth in order to justify their current share price. So for me, I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna buy Tesla at today's share price. I'm gonna wait and see for this company to come down a bit. And then maybe if I have a, a bigger margin of safety, then I would be excited to jump into Tesla as an investment, just not today. Earlier, I mentioned that NVIDIA is jumping into the autonomous vehicle market. If you're curious to see if NVIDIA is a good investment, I already made a video analyzing their intrinsic value using the discounted future free cash flow model. Check it out. Catch on the flip side.